At this very moment, in the depths of Earth's oceans, alien life forms are waiting. Not alien in the sense that they come from another planet, but alien in the sense that they're so different from what we think of as life, they seem not of this Earth. And if our oceans harbor organisms that appear extraterrestrial, imagine what we'd find in a literal alien sea. Polynices is a speculative biology project by the brilliant artist and world builder J.J. Aniorte, which explores life on a planet ruled by aquatic organisms. The infinite forms of this tropical paradise are among the most creative I've ever featured on this channel, pushing the boundaries of life as we know it. There's a tremendous amount to discover, and as always, you can follow and support the artist using the links in the description. So, let's dive into these teeming waters, and see what awaits us upon planet Polynices. The planet of Polynices is dominated by a global ocean that surrounds the planet's sole supercontinent. Conditions on land are harsh, due to solar radiation and brutal aridity. Yet just below the waves, life is overflowing. Beginning in the tropical shallows, we can find the Stegocaudate, one of the most emblematic groups of Polynices. At a glance, we seem to have found the fish of this world. Yet Stegocaudate, like all life forms we'll discover on this planet, are actually something far stranger, colonial organisms. On Earth, colonial organisms are life forms that are, in fact, made of many different individual organisms working in tandem to survive. Like organs in our bodies, different individual organisms, which are called zooids, have different functions, from locomotion to digesting food to reproducing. And the zooids that make up the stegocaudate are no different, with each individual organism playing a role in the survival of the larger life form. In order to understand this way of life, we must follow a stegocaudate from its birth to its death. As larvae, stegocaudate are transparent and lack the distinctive body shape of adults. As they grow older, their shell, which is at first covered by a thin layer of tissue, becomes more prominent as the tissue fades away. The end result is a highly unusual life form with exposed digestive and reproductive zooids enclosed within a fish-shaped shell. While an alien organism taking on a shape similar to Earth fish might be surprising, the laws of hydrodynamics have shaped non-fish animals into fish-like forms before in our own oceans. This was the case for the Filiro, a genus of marine mollusks with a body plan and style of locomotion almost identical to fish. The shells of Stegocaudate are exceptionally light, allowing them to swim freely. They can also extend digestive zooids out of their shell to vacuum up debris that get entangled in the cavities of their body. A fascinating life form indeed. After the death of a stegocaudate, its light, hollow shell usually reaches the coast. With the digestive zooids faded away, this skeletal frame has washed up on the shore of the supercontinent. As on our own planet, death is a central part of life on Polynices. Yet while they live, the stegocaudate thrive, often taking on the kinds of bright hues we associate with tropical fish on Earth. In particular, they can be found in shallow reefs, which extend for hundreds of miles across the sea floor in certain areas. These reefs are made up primarily of hive sponges, an unassuming yet highly unusual life form we'll discuss shortly. Before we do, there's a life form that clings to the reefs which demands our attention. This maze-like organism is a type of Onirocolia, a taxon closely related to the stegocaudates. Their digestive zooids grow in far more sinuous and intricate forms than their relatives, creating patterns that are completely surreal to look at. Most Onirocolia remain stationary throughout their life, relying on filter feeding for sustenance. Some genuses, however, take to the seas like their stegocaudate relatives able to control their buoyancy thanks to internal gas bladders. These labyrinthine organisms float along like balloons and can feed on a wider variety of life forms. A far more fish-like classification of colonial organism can be found in the common amphinadins. 
These intriguing life forms don't possess visible shells and swim in small schools similar in composition to many schools of fish on Earth. Yet while amphinadins might look like fish at first glance, breaking down their biology reveals they're actually quite distinct. Their eyes are located in the center of their body, with two on each side. Evolved from ancient digestive zooids, they give amphinadins 360 degree vision. Furthermore, their hidden mouth is located underneath these eyes and is connected by the folds of the mantle to two siphons on their front and back. These siphons can suck in food and release water for a jet-propelled escape. Across the coastal reefs, different amphinadins have distinctive diets. The hive sponge eaters are a notable group that feed almost exclusively on the soft tissue of aquatic hive sponges. Due to the narrowness of their siphons, they've lost the ability to use them as a jet propulsion organ, although the siphons still possess a tremendously powerful suction force to aid in consumption. Their patterned skin breaks their silhouette on the reefs, a type of camouflage convergent with many types of earth fish. And when an amphinadin is spotted by a predator, they can take off in either direction. Since their bodies are symmetrical, they can swim forwards and backwards easily, retracting one pair of fins and using the other to propel themselves along. And there is one region in particular where amphinadins thrive. The barrier reef of Canos Metropoli is the largest reef system of Polynices extending over 11,000 miles, or 18,000 kilometers. Here, hive sponges reach a breathtaking level of size, color, and diversity. Some of these colonies are almost 10,000 years old, and their nests can span several hundred square meters. As a result, for the amphinate and sponge eater, Kanos Metropoli is practically paradise. Here, the amphinadins have a veritable buffet of sponges that extends in every direction, a seemingly limitless source of potential food. Yet as we'll soon discover, the sponges aren't entirely defenseless. The hive sponges themselves might be completely stationary. When menaced by a sponge-eating predator, however, most types of hive sponges have an unexpected defense. They can release swarms of tiny life forms called drones into the water, which descend upon predators to defend their home. Under magnification, it becomes clear that the tiny drones possess sharp mouth parts, which can irritate predators that swim too close to the hive. In many respects, the aquatic drones have converged on a behavior similar to that of Earth bees. Not only do they defend colonies with their stinging strikes, but they also collect food for the hive sponges in the form of planktonic organisms. Yet perhaps the most incredible aspect of the hive is that it communicates with its drones through radio wave frequencies. Specialized structures, which are actually highly derived drones themselves, serve as signal repeaters to transfer signals from the hive to drones that travel long distances in search of food. As incredible as this likely sounds, it's possible that brittle stars, a close relative of the starfish, can detect radio waves and might even use them to navigate their surroundings. Although studies are ongoing, it seems this is possible thanks to specialized structures along their cell membrane that function like tiny radio antenna. So, the radio wave communication of hive sponges, while unexpected, is far from impossible. Radio waves don't travel far underwater, so a wide variety of biological receivers have emerged to aid in getting signals to the drones. Yet other life forms on Polynices have taken radio communication to even stranger levels. In the larger taxon of radio scriptorians, the chainfish are organisms unlike any other. These life forms are characterized by having a body divided into three or more modules that swim in an orderly line. While they appear to be unique individuals, they share the same genetic information and cannot live without each other. Therefore, although they are not linked by any type of tissue, they are considered a single organism. As stated before, colonial organisms in our oceans are indeed made up of many different types of living units working together, although they're typically connected by some kind of tissue. But for the various types of chainfish, connectivity comes once again in the form of radio waves. These bizarre processions communicate and sense each other's position entirely through short-range frequencies. 
And so, the chainfish move along the seabed, continuing their bizarre way of life. And throughout the global ocean, perhaps the ultimate realization of radio communication comes in the form of a larger network that has emerged between individual sponges. Using complex frequencies, hive sponges can send signals to each other, including information about their environment, calls for help, or even stimuli like pain that other individuals can experience as their own. This intercommunication has, over millions of years, led to a complex evolutionary arms race, producing adaptations like the encryption of messages, passwords, and even the sending of deceptive signals. This biological internet is an incredible feat of evolution, and something unique to planet Polynices. In speaking of unique, another unprecedented life form exists in the form of Dipteronathes. As larvae, these life forms seem to have two heads, but their mouth is actually located in the middle of their bodies, which is connected to two independent stomachs located on opposite ends of their figure. As they get older, these twin digestive systems drag out behind the head like tails, connected to the body by long pharyngeal ducts. This strange body plan arose from the fusion of two digestive zooids, but today all three regions are controlled by a single brain. In coastal lagoons, warm and calm waters provide ideal locations for dipteronathes to flourish. This particular specimen is an echinocephalus, characterized by pharyngeal ducts that can reach almost one and a half feet, or half a meter in length. While everything about the Dipteronathes is somewhat bizarre, they are a highly successful, albeit highly specialized, form of life in this region. This environment is also home to distinct varieties of hive sponges, which form impressive reefs on the sea floor. And nestled among reefs like this one, a bizarre filter feeder is waiting. This is a sea belt, a distant relative of the hive sponge. This organism is formed from a stationary hive and hundreds of drones joined together by suction cups, forming a structure similar to a circular ribbon. The belt constantly rotates so that each drone passes through the interior of the hive and deposits plankton trapped during the spin. The living hive then digests this plankton and transforms it into a nectar that feeds the drones. Truly, there's no other organism like it. Other organisms get around by very different means. Rotograta is a diverse class of life forms that traverse the seabed by rotating themselves via contractions of their muscles. This form of locomotion has earned them the common name of sea wheels. Each individual zooid in the larger wheel possesses two legs, which look a bit like the spindly legs of Earth millipedes. Unlike millipedes, however, sea wheels have no true front or back, with every zooid on the wheel having their own simple mouth. As a result, which mouth gets used depends entirely on which section of the sea wheel is closest to their prey on a given hunt. And so, the wheel spins on, feeding upon whatever lies in its path. Along the rocky shore of the supercontinent, we can find something exceedingly rare for planet Polynices, a creature that can move upon dry land. This massive life form is a colony of carnivorous pharyngopods, which work together to drag the serpentine body of the colony out of the water to catch prey in puddles along the shoreline. A pair of simple eyes located at each of its ends provides simple visual information that facilitates navigation in this environment. The flexible appendages that the colony uses to get around resemble the tube feet of sea pigs, an unusual type of sea cucumber that walk along the floor of our oceans on tube-shaped appendages. Yet the thousands of tentacular appendages on the underside of the intertidal colony aren't just feet but are actually individual zooids with mouth, teeth, and stomachs. And at almost 10 feet, this shambling goliath is one of the largest and most dangerous predators in its environment. And at last, the final life form on planet Polynices we'll be discussing is the Limargia, one of the most recognizable organisms in the Polynices reefs. This bottom-feeding life form is adapted to engulf sand and digest the organic matter found in it playing a very important role in the ecosystem by recycling nutrients. The most impressive characteristic of Limargia, however, is its size. 
Some species of the genus can reach almost 200 feet or 60 meters in length, making them without a doubt the most massive polyzoans. As incredible as this sounds, some of the absolute largest Earth siphonophore colonies do reach similar lengths in the deep sea, although they can't quite match the Limargia's size. In possessing such incredible bulk, the enormous bodies of Limargia serve as a habitat for a plethora of organisms, who find refuge upon its trunk. As a result, the Limargia resemble a moving landscape, steadily shifting across the sea floor. The waters of Polynices are home to some of the most surreal forms of life I've ever documented for the archive. Even the most alien organisms in our oceans aren't quite as surreal as what swims below those waves. If you've enjoyed learning about the complex creatures of Polynices, you can follow and support the artist using the links in the description. An art book exploring more about this amazing planet will be coming sometime in the future, so keep an eye out. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this entry, please lend your support and like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.